June Thorne. Reflexes. We all have them. We're born with them. Ever tried walking on board a rocking ship? As the ship tilts to one side, you tend to lean to the other. That's a type of unconscious movement, an equilibrium reaction used to maintain our center of gravity. A newborn child enters the world with a variety of movement skills practiced in the weightless environment of the mother's womb. But now, those skills have to be demonstrated against the influences of gravity. Gravity has a tendency to pull all physical bodies to the center of the earth. And infants have to learn to perform movement that withstands that tendency. It's the degree of muscle tension, or tone, that enables a child both to maintain posture and to perform skilled and coordinated movement patterns. Dr. Philippa Campbell is a prominent occupational therapist. She will provide theoretical principles in the area of neurodevelopment. Neurodevelopment encompasses the dynamic process of growth that begins during the early weeks of gestation and continues throughout adolescence. However, rapid growth of movement skills are most remarkable during the first year of life. By definition, reflexes and automatic movement patterns are observable, unconsciously directed motor responses to specific stimuli. Some enable the child to survive, while others permit the orientation of the body within space against the forces of gravity. Tone is the degree of tension in the muscles of the body. Postural tone describes the state of sufficient tension in the body muscles to maintain a posture against gravity. A number of automatic movement responses help to maintain anti-gravity postures. These movements are sometimes called reflexes or reactions. The absence of these automatic movement responses can have a great impact on both posture and movement. For instance, sitting requires use of the arms initially to help support the trunk and head when balance is disturbed. However, as confidence is gained in movement of the trunk, head, and pelvis, the arms are no longer required for balance except in extreme circumstances. The central nervous system includes lower brain centers as well as the cortex. The automatic movements that align body parts, maintain posture against gravity, and protect the body are associated with lower brain centers. These automatic responses stay with us throughout life acting as unconscious sentries as we go about complex motor activities. Postural tone, the degree of tension in the muscles, is controlled at the lower brain centers and changes in response to information from the sensory receptors. Tone provides the basis for automatic movements as well as for goal-directed movement. Current theories of neurodevelopment suggest that interaction between central nervous system functions and the environmental support of infant behavior provide the basis for infant learning. This early learning results in the maintenance of the anti-gravity postures, body alignment against gravity, and voluntary movement skills. Normal postural tone is essential to the performance of all types of movement skills. However, many children with damage to the central nervous system or with delayed development demonstrate atypical tone. 
movement patterns that are dependent on normal tension in the body muscles will likely be atypical. Therefore, these children may have difficulty achieving normal co-contraction in performing skilled and coordinated movement. The function of co-contraction to stabilize the proximal joints against gravity may be attained, but the pattern or form of that stabilization may be atypical. The atypical stabilization may then prevent the child from using the muscles to perform skilled movement. For example, if the shoulder girdle is elevated to aid in head control, the arms may become internally rotated and the child may be unable to reach with the arms in all directions. For example, it may be impossible for the child to reach upwards. Where these patterns of stabilization are used repeatedly, secondary changes in the muscles and joints may result. For example, the internal rotators of the arms may become tight or may eventually become permanently shortened. Children who are demonstrating a typical tone or unusual ways of stabilizing posture or of moving require a team approach to meet their needs. Parents, physicians, physical, occupational, and speech therapists, and teachers must all be aware of the child's specific difficulties with tone and movement. Intervention methods must be based on the movement disorder and individually designed for each child. Irreparable harm can result if atypical tone and movement patterns are strengthened by misdirected intervention strategies. The degree of muscle tension or tone may be increased or decreased. This handicapped child exhibits increased tone called hypertonicity. Hypertonia is characterized by an increased resistance to passive movement. As you can see, I have great difficulty moving his arm. Um, posturing in pathological patterns of movement, he has his hands fisted and his legs are adducted or held very closely together. Hypertonia is also characterized by overflow of movement. You can see in his mouth with any movement he gets increased associated movements in other areas of his body like his mouth. Some of the things that we can do to try to decrease this hypertonia are normalization of tone, and we use slow movement and movement in rotation in order to help normalize the tone. As the child begins to relax, you will see more voluntary movement. You will see movement out of the patterns, um, out of the pathological patterns, such as he's getting some isolated movement of his legs. He's also reaching out with his arms occasionally. And you'll see a decrease in the associated reactions and overflow movement to other parts of the body. Also, as he relaxes, it will be easier to move his extremities and you'll feel less resistance to movement as you bring him through a range of motion. We're not seeing this today, but if he were truly relaxed, his hand would start to open and you wouldn't see that fisting. The amount of relaxation it takes to achieve this will depend on how tight the child is to begin with. The more severe the hypertonia, the more relaxation time it takes. When working with a child with hypertonia, it's very important that the teacher work along with the therapist in her classroom activities. Um, it's very important to relax these children before you try to attempt any activities, and this should be done in coordination with the therapist because the therapist is the one who's trained to show the teacher how to use these relaxation techniques. Environmental demands influence tone. Tone can become increased in response to a loud noise or when a toy is placed in front of the child. Almost anything in an environment can make a child with high tone increase their tone. 
even moving my hand, you can see how he startles, he's closing his eyes, his hand's getting tighter. Something like a toy like this, where he can't, con you can see what's happening. He's scared to death and he's tightening right up. He can't control what's going on with the toy. It's very frightening. He needs to have control over his environment. A loud noise can do the same thing to Keith. You okay? Decreased postural tone is called hypotonicity. Hypotonicity prevents this child from maintaining anti-gravity movements, such as jumping or standing on one leg. Okay, this is David. He has Down syndrome. And one of the characteristics of Down syndrome is the low tone. He's very mobile at his joints. And one way of determining it, this is through the scarf sign, which is where you bring your elbow past the midline of your body, your nose. And as you can see, David can get his extremely far past his nose. He tends to be very floppy. When I let go of his arms, he kind of just lets go. He doesn't hold them in any one position. Lay down. Another area you can see where the low tone is is in his hip joints where you can get his legs extended into a 90 degree position here. Very floppy. David, stand up. Stand on one foot. Try and balance. With low tone you tend to have difficulty with your postural changes, which is what he's demonstrating here. Another way of telling his low tone is, David, lift your head up. Can you lift your head up? Lift your head and arms. Pretend you're flying. There you go. He can't get his legs up off the ground here. Good boy. Okay. Proper positioning and handling of a child are used to influence tone. This helps provide the basis for more normal body alignment, posture, and movement. This particular child is dominated by um, extensor tone and by strong reflexes, which are initiated by thrusting of her head and backwards. And by putting her in a sideline position, um, getting her out of lying on her back, where these other reflexes are dominating, she has the possibility of getting her hands to her mouth, getting the shoulders re protracted instead of retracted, which they are when she's on her back. Um, we place a pillow under her head to elevate it up against gravity a little bit. We put a pillow under her, uh, between her legs to get um, the legs separated. And it's a very good position for her. We assume a normal standing posture and preserve our balance moving from one posture to another through automatic reactions called reflexes. All right, now the child should normally put her arms forward to protect a fall forward. And she does not show that. She could not protect herself if she were to fall forward. The same is true on the side. Uh, this child showed the, the ability to, to maintain his balance, sitting balance, on a ball using equilibrium reactions. And uh, when we tilted the ball, he was able to uh, bring his head and trunk back to midline and maintain his sitting balance on the ball. When we tilted the other direction, he saw his head turn slightly and his trunk lean into the high side. Maybe you saw his hand come out at one point to regain his center of gravity. The same way with pushing him backwards, he leaned forward a little bit. Uh, part of the time he was goofing off, but most of the time you could see how he managed to maintain his balance, making postural adjustments 
to maintain